for those who are watching my channel and have been keeping track of some of my comments, I've come up with the, uh, actually, I didn't come up with this. Uh, I'm not the first person to come up with the idea of the culture of death. It was actually by John Paul II, who uh, wrote an encyclical that he titled in 1992, The Culture of Death. And he was identifying the usual suspects, uh, the, the depravity of the usual suspects. He, I, obviously, he failed to mention his own organization, the Vatican and the Catholic Church, as one of the usual suspects. <laughs> but uh, he did he did come up with this uh, phrase, the culture of death. And for people who have been listening to my commentary, I'm going to now, uh, I think what I'd like to do, and we'll see how long I stay with this, to do some uh, comments on the most egregious transgressions against all of life, as I perceive it, when I reflect on our situation, and we are in a very difficult situation, and people don't want to hear this, and I understand why, because it's difficult to get up in the morning and say, you know, whatever it is that we have to tell ourselves to perk ourselves up, get ready for the day, and uh, to what end, what's the point? And I know that people have a tendency to, I, and in my own life, I understand this, to avoid a situation uh, by ignoring it. Uh, it's, it's, one of the, it's, it's, it's one of those human fallacies, uh, flaws rather, that, uh, uh, that we're afflicted by. But I would, I, I'm going to do a series of dissertations, commentary on the culture of death and the worst culprits. And I'm going to capture, to start with, uh, a video, and I'll run this right now. Let me capture this. I don't, in fact, believe in vaccines, period. I mean, I think at this point in my life, I would say that no one should be getting any vaccine. And I had to get to that point over time. And know? how long did it take you to get to that's a That's a really extreme position. It is an extreme position. And at first you would say, well, of course, polio, smallpox, I mean, those are really bad things. They're very fine vaccines that we could all have. But when you start to realize the whole system, you know, we live in a, a symbiotic relationship with all the other species. And all of them, even the pathogens, are actually doing something good for us. And this is something I'm really excited about lately that I've learned about the flu vaccine. What's really interesting about that virus is that it goes into the muscle cells and it reprograms them to basically hand over their sulfate to the flu virus. And then the cell releases those viruses and they carry the sulfate on their backs and they deliver it to the blood. So what's happening is the flu virus is rescuing the blood from a meltdown. And when you look at it that way, you think, oh my goodness, when you get sick with the flu, it's actually helping you out because your blood desperately needs that sulfate. And the flu virus is the messenger. It's allowed to deliver the sulfate. The whole system is geared on anti-life. You know, you vaccinate to kill off all the microbes that might infect your body, you know, and then you take all these drugs which are interfering with life in the sense that they're disrupting some enzyme somewhere that's probably very critical to a whole bunch of different functions. The whole thing is just interfering with life. It's such a strange model. I've never heard anyone put it that way, but wow. So the rate of vaccination, which is not that big a variable from something in the 60s to like something in the 90s, the rate of vaccination across 50 states correlates uh, with autism in the way that you would expect more vaccination has more autism. So you're saying the states that have the greatest uptake of, that up, so 90% of the parents, you know, follow the rules or 95. Exactly. So those states have a larger, have, have higher, higher autism statistically. So I'll switch over to the next segment uh, of the same uh, called Bot Movie, which is, uh, in my mind, it outlines one of the biggest transgressors against all life by injecting young, innocent children, babies with, with stuff that shouldn't be there. And it's part of a, what I call the culture of death. And I look for in this, in this understanding, what I'm trying to transmit to people that watch this, uh, what is important for me is not just the information here. I want to highlight this. It's, it's very important to people that are posting and making YouTubes that aren't just decorations and entertainment, that it's very important to do this from the point of view that 
you let me know that you know. And by watching you, I know that you know. And I think this is uh, a potentially a very snowballing effect. We, I personally feel very ineffective because my, my own fight or my own uh, direction has been to publicize my paintings. I've been doing this for 45 years. And if people say, well, yeah, you go out and you try and you publicize, you, you come up with something and you try to uh, exhibit it and expose it and sell it and make money and all that kind of a thing. But I think for me, it has transitioned now. It's not just publicizing something that I've done, but publicizing, letting you know that I know. This is very important that you know that I know. This is the, the part of this particular venue, YouTube, social media, that I tell you that I know, I want you to know, and you do the same for me, that you're telling me something that I need to know based on what it is that whatever your fight might be or your understanding, this is a very crucial effect, I think, that could snowball, which is why I've maintained and continued even under the some of the stress that I've felt in persisting and continuing this line of thinking and this awareness, my anti-nuclear struggle fight to expose this uh, monumental monster against all life on the planet. And this is another culprit. This vaccination is another culprit. I'll just run a little bit more of this uh, uh, very lovely woman. Let's see what she has to say. didn't used to see chronic, debilitating diseases in children until recently. And so we know that it's something we've done, all the obesity, all the attention deficit, autism. We didn't see these things then. This is relatively new. And so relatively new, what have we introduced? Genetically modified foods, which have genes that have been spliced and mended with other genes, genes from not only different species, but different kingdoms of animals. They're not even closely related. We also have introduced a lot of vaccinations. And in those vaccines, we've got attenuated viruses. We've got aluminum, we've got mercury. Do we know what's in the vaccines? Do we know what's in the GMO? Do we know what's in the food? We don't know. We know that this is not normal. We know that this is not what children looked like 200 years ago, even 100 years ago. We've seen chronic disease multiply exponentially children. It's so ubiquitous right now. Now she goes into a case history of a, a tragic event of a child having been immunized <clears throat> and uh, the consequences is a completely disabled uh, a child incapable uh, of functioning in any reasonable way. And I'll stop here because uh, that, is, that is something that you can research once you know about the, the, the fundamental premise behind vaccination is a building block of a culture that obviously does not love its offspring, its children, where I say people hate children. This is something that is inexcusable. Even in ignorance, it's inexcusable. It is manifested in culture, but this is another, this is a fight that different people have taken on like this woman, this MD, preventative medicine MD. And I'm gonna switch now to, uh, uh, I'll, I'll switch now to uh, the studio. So my thoughts on this <clears throat> and my indirect commentary that I will articulate, I'll try to articulate a little bit more about the culprits, the culture of death, how it is represented in, in our day-to-day -day life. It's very important for you to know that I know. And for me to post on YouTube is an activity that confirms this for you and for me in the sense that I know that I have done what I feel necessary in my life to be a counter to the force, the culture of death. I need to counter, I need to counter what it is that we're being herded into in a sense through a culture, a superstructure around us. And the YouTube genre 
and I'm not interested, like I say, as information. Information for me is something that I am aware that I know that you know. This is something that it confirms, but there is a much greater importance within the confirmation rather than the information that I know that you know. It's like I say, I prefer honesty to truth. It's the same kind of thing. That truth can be altered and changed whichever, in whichever direction you want it to go in. People say, no, truth is universal. No, it's not. Honesty is universal. The intention behind what people say is universal. That, that is a quality in us that is uh, uh, unalterable. You're either honest or you're dishonest. But you can say the truth and make a mistake and not, you know, even if you say the truth and you're being, uh, or say, a, say something that's not true, but you're being honest, that is still a value to me because your integrity is at stake here. And this is what I look for. And I'm not interested in the blame game. But, but that doesn't mean that by identifying the culprits, we are actually letting each other know that we know. What we do with that in our day-to-day -day life is the issue for me, what we do with that. It's not enough just to stand on YouTube and uh, list off the usual suspects, but, but the knowledge that I have, that I know that you have, is very important to me. So there is that kind of interchange, exchange going on that is not generally recognized. Why people do what they do in terms of the work that they produce, whether it's uh, a digital work like a YouTube video or whether it's something in real life where we're in, involved in our community in some form or other, which is ultimately the goal. And the more people know that I know they know, the greater the possibility of us having an effect. So I think that's... Uh, uh, my first video on uh, dealing with this idea of the culture of death and how it's represented in the most egregious sense. And vaccinations are probably the most vicious uh, so-called scientific programs out there that undermine our biology on a very basic level in terms of we are born and we are pumped full of these adjuvants and mercury and lead and all the things that are known to be known to be lethal to us and of course we have uh, the nuclear criminal syndicate uh, now performing a, a major bloodletting on the entire planet in terms of all of life but that's another topic but i just thought i'd post these uh, uh clips and the people that are actually posting uh what i get encouraged by is that i know they know and now they know that, well, they don't know that I personally know, but somebody else has come across this fact, this information. And that's why I think it's important to post. And all you posters that are out there that are joining up within my concept, my concept is we are a clan. And the people that are uh, acting their conscience, whether it's through words and deeds, deeds are very important in this, people, very important. But words are the first step towards deeds. And that the fact that you know that I know and vice versa is inspirational on a certain level. D don't underestimate that. That's how I think about it. And I'm starting on a series. I'm going to continue my uh, Pacific paintings. Uh, they'll, uh, you'll see uh, I'm, I'm using the uh, World War I helmet as uh, carriers of the uh, corporate logos. I think they're going to be kind of humorous and fun. And that's one way of... Uh, exposing the bastards as well by making fun of them because they always try to make fun of people that are contrary to this culture people that are people that are standing up are being ridiculed and worse and worse obviously but uh, ridicule is uh, is a wonderful tool sarcasm and satire and comedy to expose the bastards and uh, this is what our job is pick your fight pick your fight and uh, uh, make a difference in a in a personal way change our own lives in order that other people can be inspired in the same way that we feel motivated to make a difference. Culture of death, an expose over the next, well, let's see how long I last on this. I'll, I'll just sort of point out, point out uh, the most egregious, the most egregious transgressions against life, especially human life. And in this case, vaccines uh, against children. Out bloody rages. And by the way, just to end it off, that they say that vaccines 
stopped uh, smallpox in the uh, uh, in the in the fifties. The fact is that hygiene had actually eradicated smallpox in what are known as developed nations, developed countries. Hygiene, good hygiene, prevented prevented smallpox from uh, 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 by the time they brought in the vaccination. Smallpox was virtually eradicated, so it wasn't vaccinations at all.